what if someone were to explain the nature of cosmic mechanics in a really simple fashion? Uh, you know, I've tried to explain a hundred times about what actually defines a magnet in denotation, and the only thing that actually does define a magnet is field coherency. What does coherency mean? Well, people say, well, something that's coherent means it's in phase. That's a meaningless statement. In phase actually means that there is a single incommensurate locus by which a field perturbation, whether that's longitudinal, transverse, uh, or toroidal, operates from a single plenum, a single plane of inertia. Um, you know, like that uh, gigantic uh, magnet, that thousand-dollar magnet that's about yay big that I mess with in some of my videos? Um, that magnet is not extremely powerful. I mean, it's pretty damn powerful. Um, we know for a fact that, uh, like, just turning on a cathode ray tube, you could actually stand back from 20 feet and actually wave the thing like this, and you can actually see the effect. Wow on the cathode ray tube. But we know from the hardcore math that even that thousand dollar magnet, there's just no way the field divergence emanates out that far. And science has never explained this. See, what they don't understand is that a field is not comprised out of particles, for one, which is absolutely irrefutable. And this, of course, is the fundamental and key number one error. You know, it's a house of cards. It's a phantasm of uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics. Uh, all fields are uh, inertia perturbations. I don't care if you call it inertia. Not our current denotation of inertia. I'm talking about the original denotation of inertia. We think of inertia as like you're traveling in a car, you hit the brakes, and you still continue to go forward and hit your head against the dash. That's a totally different connotation of inertia. Field perturbation, ether perturbation, inertia perturbation. What if we're to explain things, and no matter how simple, and this is the great irony of uh, field mechanics, no matter how simple I try to explain it, it becomes um, increasingly more and more difficult to explain things that are increasingly more and more simple. Um, let's take the magnet, for example, and then we'll talk about something really important, and then that will explain things very simply, the secrets of cosmic mechanics. I've often mentioned endlessly a reciprocating processional hyperboloid. Let's take that gigantic magnet, and this is what people make the mistake. They want to always buy, and this is the ideation people have. They don't understand the, the notion of space and counter space. This is the, the most key important fundamental, if you bear with me a second, you'll understand the key fundamental of cosmic mechanics. You'll have a much better grasp on it. People um, want to buy like a more powerful magnet. They look at the, like the N rating, the Gaussian rating. It's like, oh, N38 is kind of good. 40 is better. 45 is great. 50 is awesome. Now we've got like N55 Gauss, super powerful neodymium iron borons. And then when people buy these, they get disappointed. I'm just using this as an example to explain um, a really, really key important concept that you've never heard about before. And I'll get to that. And they're disappointed. They think that they've been lied to, like when they buy a really powerful magnet. Um, sometimes, like these eBay sellers, they do cheat. You know, they, they sell you weak magnets. But in the case of the really powerful ones, the field is very, very shallow. In other words, it's like if you have two magnets of exact same size and exact same quality of build, one is like an N40 Gauss, and the other one is an N55 Gauss. The field, the powerful field um, emanations of those, as far as what the common idiot refers to as magnetic attraction, which of course is dielectric acceleration, is very shallow on the much more powerful magnet. And why does it work that way? It's because magnetism is, as Faraday called it, the dielectric field. It is the loss of inertia. The secret I discovered, and this is my discovery, it's why it's tattooed right in the most important part of my body, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, is the expression of the loss of inertia. That's the primordial fractal of the entire universe. The loss of inertia is ex always expressed in this um, expression, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. If we express inertia as 1, 
what is the expression of the loss of inertia as defined in its pure nat uh, nativity, in its pure natural state. And people say, well, why would a super powerful magnet, and follow with me here, I'm going to get to the key point, but you have to follow a chain of logic. Why, why would it be so shallow? The reason for that is, and here's a toroid, for example, the more powerful the field, the more shallow the field. And why would that be the case? That is exactly like saying, and this is completely imaginary, it doesn't exist in real life, that's exactly like saying if you have a sink, it's like saying the more you turn the sink on for more pressure, the more actual vacuum, which does not happen in a drain, the more vacuum occurs. So if I'm going to like crank out the water to max, then the vacuum increases uh, additionally so at a rate that uh, I'm going to leave for an equation in the fourth edition of my book. But this is the reason why the field is so shallow. Like this would be the, the field around a super powerful neodymium iron boron N55 gauss, whereas this would be the field around an N40 gauss. Both magnets have the exact same dimensions and build quality. N40 gauss, N50, N55. We've right, it kind of reached right around N58 gauss. It feels really shallow. People are like, this sucks. You know, I paid extra for a really powerful magnet. And I tell them, you know what, buddy? You got a really powerful magnet. But what you don't understand about magnetism is that it is a conjugate vortex. Here are two words. And I talk about this uh, in my fourth edition of the book. I've often referred to uh, what magnetism is is a reciprocating, people understand these words individually. Reciprocating processional, you know what precession is, like geromagnetic precession. Reciprocate, and this is also known as the Lamore frequency. These frequencies, like 49.2 uh, uh, megahertz, is the average uh, pre uh, precession frequency. The, in, the frequencies are, are rather extensive, but that's like the average geromagnetic. These frequencies, are called Lamore frequencies, have to be known for the creation of magnetic resonance imaging machines. It's precession of geromagnetic. Reciprocating processional hyperboloid. A hyperboloid is basically an hourglass shape. It is literally the definition. It is the inverse image of the donut. Okay, here we have the donut shape you're looking at in the table. If you take the negative image of the donut, what you will see is, of course, the smaller version, is an hourglass shape. This is actually the geometry of trans-Euclidean uh, counter space. This is the trans-Euclidean geometry of acceleration. This is the geometry of force and motion. This is the geometry of inertia and acceleration. What happens is, in a really crude analogy, and then I'm going to explain the important thing, and this is the one thing that you never would have been taught anywhere in college or high school, but you're going to learn the secret right now in a very simple way, and I'm almost done, of the conjugate vortex is that, for example, on the drain, like I said, if you're, the more you turn the, the water on and the more that comes out, it's like, well, I'm not really getting much water spread because the more I turn the water up, the more the drain is actually sucking the water down. It's like if you're trying to fill a basin with water, it's like, well, you know, you got a little bit of basin at in uh, 40 gauss to stick your hands in the water, if you will, you know, as it's slowly going down the drain. You're like, well, I want a little bit more water, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the tap more. But what happens when you do that at a rate with an equation that I'll define in the fourth edition, which is really this equation on my wrist, you actually get increased acceleration. So the more you actually turn the water on, the shallower the pool, if you will, in my crude analogy, will get at the bottom of the sink. And this is why, and this is an absolute hardcore fact, why uh, the fields on uh, super powerful magnets are very, very, very shallow. Um, my buddy who uh, has a few, a few videos on uh, pyramidal magnets, they use them in magnetic testing, and uh, uh, he uh, creates these hullback arrays where they're actually stacked magnets, and they come up to a point, and they have an extremely high Gaussian flux of like 1.5 Tesla or even higher, but it is so damn shallow. I mean, it's as shallow as... A piece of paper basically. As soon as you lift that Gauss meter off about the thickness of a piece of paper, it falls off drastically. And that's the more you increase the force and motion, the more you increase the inertia and acceleration. The entire universe is exactly like this. Okay, we already know the toroid is the geometry of force and motion, the creation of space. The space, of course, would be the hollow, excuse me, of this toroid, the donut. 
And the, uh, this paper here in the center, let me hold it where you can see it correctly. This is the geometry of counter space, okay? The toroid, the magnetic toroid you see here, that's force and motion divergence. Literally, magnetism is nothing other than a Poincaré, and you need to look up this up, Poincaré disk model of projective geometry. These two things are one thing only. Inertia and acceleration is the plane of inertia, and is defined by the loss of that inertia at a rate of, which is an expression, 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, which defines the loss of that inertia, i.e., uh, the uh, toroid, uh, which is uh, defined by this uh, metal, uh, it's not actually a slinky, they actually call it a toroflux, but this toroidal formation around this structure. So this is actually the geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, inertia and acceleration being the white part, the little negative image of the force and motion geometry of the creation of, not of space, space is not a thing, space has no properties as Nikola Tesla said. This is a conjugate means permanently joined, like uh, Siamese twins. I mean, some people don't know what the word conjugate means. So a lot of people need a bigger vocabulary. It's the toroid and the hyperboloid. Hyperboloid, hourglass shape, toroid, donut shape, if you want to make things really simple. And together, these form what is technically... See, there's no straight lines in the universe. Everything is curved linear. Everything. There is not one single straight line in the universe. Now, there are some lines that are very long that seem straight, but ultimately there's not a single straight line in the entire universe. It doesn't exist. It can't exist. This is the conjugate vortex geometry of force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. Light and illumination. The most simplex principles in the universe are conjugate. Light and illumination. Force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. It's the conjugate vortex. Force of motion centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence. So, yes. It's, it's amazing to me that the simple things are so kind of hard to, hard to explain. You'll say conjugate vortex. So what the hell is a conjugate vortex mean? It means that in our imaginary drain system, the more you turn on the water, the more the vacuum occurs at the drain at the bottom. Of course, that doesn't happen in a real sink, but I have to use that analogously to plant the image in your mind of how actually magnetism works. And magnetism, of course, is that which defines the entire universe. This is the magnetic toroid, force in motion, and then the curvilinear reintegration or synthesis is inertia and acceleration as defined by the hyperboloid. This is literally the geometry of trans-Euclidean counter space. It's that simple. Except it's not simple, and it's not simple to explain, but anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye.